Hello and welcome back to the podcast. My guest this week is Sarah Gregory. She's a contemporary portrait painter based in London and belongs to a collection of artists called Studio Fridays who have a studio space in Whetstone in Barnet. Having originally studied fine art in Stourbridge College of Art, she then became a teacher of art for 25 years before leaving to pursue her own art practice. She's also an art tutor for children in and around schools in Hertfordshire. In 2022, she was a contestant on the popular Portrait Artist of the Year competition, and she's currently painting a series of self-portraits documenting her seven-year struggle with the menopause before starting HRT, covering subjects such as hot flushes, insomnia, anxiety, and rage. Welcome to the podcast, Sarah. Hi, Emma. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, actually. (laughs) first time <laughs> yeah so I um I think suddenly I started seeing your your series of, of portraits self-portraits popping up on Instagram and I thought hmm this is really interesting it's not something that I've seen before and thank you very much for agreeing to come on and and chat to us about it so what was the sort of the process of you deciding that you were going because it's quite a personal thing anyway to well any kind of self-portrait is a personal thing but particularly this and sort of moments of vulnerability what made you decide that that was something that you wanted to tackle well it was it was really strange because um I was always a really very positive person um happy almost almost childlike in my kind of enthusiasm for for life um and then peri- perimenopause kind of hit me and and I just wasn't really understanding my own feelings I was thinking where where what mm. is this in fact I didn't even know the word perimenopause which is really quite embarrassing to admit you're not alone don't worry <laughs> plenty of other people like don't join the dots or the penny suddenly oh, drops no. years later well, absolutely. I even had to like Google what what does perimenopause mean? When someone mentioned to me, I was thinking, I've heard of menopause. What's perimenopause? And I had to kind of Google it. I mean, nowadays, I mean, it's it's talked about so much recently that that you kind of you can't believe that 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 happened. But um, I think it is only in the last couple of years that mm. women are talking to women or or generally about this subject. So at the time, this was kind of a good seven years ago. I I it kind of hit me, and I didn't know what what was happening, and I I had these. Um, these kind of strange waves of emotion and symptoms and I just kind of thought am I going a bit crazy am I am I losing my personality my sense of self Um, Mm. um, and I kind of wanted to try and capture some of those feelings and I wouldn't I'm not somebody who would write those feelings down I'm not somebody who would like kind of um necessarily write a diary or anything but I my language is visual and my language is paint so that's how I communicate and I just wanted to put down some of my my feelings down for my own sake really I just started to kind of like think well you know I'm feeling really crappy I'm going to try and Mm. capture that feeling and once I'd done one or two I I kind of um kind of got on a bit of a roll and 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 it was it was lovely hearing from other people you know when they see some of my paintings that um so um I thought I would do this almost like a visual diary but it was it was a visual diary that I started after um I went on to HRT so Mm. it was um kind of looking back because I think if the feelings and how kind of groggy and horrible I was sort of feeling at the time. Um, I don't think I'd have been able to have painted those paintings at the exact time. It was almost looking back at uh, what I'd been through. I was trying to capture those feelings and, and it was, it was having that relief and release from um, taking HRT that I felt I was able to, to start painting them. Mm. And it, was it sort of almost quite a cathartic process of kind of reliving Mm. that being able to kind of process it through that that medium that you're so familiar with yeah I think it was I mean um you know I the sort of my my symptoms I know everyone's kind of very Mm. very different but my symptoms the, the, the worst feeling worst thing for me was the insomnia and and not being able to sleep and um, you know that sh- that utter exhaustion when you wake up in the morning. You've got to go to work, and you haven't had a single, you know, a wink of sleep. 
and it goes on night after night after night. And um, and I'd been to um, doctors and I'd said, I'm not sleeping. And then they say, have you had a hot bath? Maybe some milk before you go to bed. And I'm like, kind of almost kind of want to shake them and go. Oh, I, haven't... No, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I haven't slept for seven years. Do you not think I haven't <laughs> gone through those things? Um so that that was a major major one, and then it was also the the kind of that lying awake at night, with your mind kind of mm. whirring, and the kind of the the we can all relate to that <laughs> yeah, awful feelings, and and sort of lying in bed at the first thing in the morning, just saying so anxious, you're thinking, can I even get out of bed um, and, and face the day? I mean, not, no, you get up, you have a shower, and you carry on, and you know you you do, yeah. but it's just kind of trying to capture that that moment of what's happening why am I feeling like this really um um so they were the major two really were the were the anxiety and the insomnia um and I mean the, the hot flushes really that you just put up with those that's kind of a bit uncomfortable in my mind they were just slightly kind of uncomfortable and almost sometimes funny you know you'd be like kind of whipping off your jumper in the supermarket but um that didn't didn't bother me so much but it was the it was that kind of general kind of the psychological feelings really more than the physical feelings and, and how did you sort of uh, the culmination of the, those seven years you did finally um go on to HRT what, mm. what was the what changed what what kind of what was the penny drop well, the penny drop moment actually was um when I um when I watched um Davina McCall um on her menopause program um, like so many <laughs> yeah sure. exactly and she was just talking to women being so honest herself about her feelings um the um interviews with people about the the sort of psychological things they'd been going through it really did just click and i thought you know mm. i why am i putting up with this why am I just kind of trying to be strong and I'm not going to give in and I'm just going to keep going um actually I need to look after myself and be a bit kinder to myself um and that's when I decided that I would go for HRT I mean I'd obviously thought about HRT before but it felt almost like um I was giving in Mm, I think yeah I think a lot of people feel it's like I should be able to cope I should be able to get through this it's a natural thing you think well this is just a natural process mm. I should just kind of dig my heels in deep and get through it um and I think as women we do do that we just kind of put up with things mm. um and keep going and I just by watching that I just felt actually I, I I need to just have a little bit more self care, and put myself for you know first and and think no I, I need to be looked after and 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 this isn't working for me I I can't carry on not sleeping and feeling so bad, so um and that's when I decided I would go on onto mm. HRT. I mean it is it, when you when you think about that sort of not sleeping for seven years it is amazing yeah. what we will put up with with yeah. that sort of oh I don't want to make a fuss. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. And, and you just, you know, put up and shut up almost, you know, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And um, I think um, with the with the sleep thing, you do kind of get used to it as well. I, I mean, if I had if I had no sleep at all now, I, it would really floor me. But, uh, you know, it, it, you, you get used to to, to that, um, mm. unfortunately. But we do um, now know, yeah, there are much uh, sort of greater long term health ramifications of not sleeping you know, mm -hmm. not having that optimal block of sleep every day yeah. um, can really impact on, on our kind of longer term health and well-being. So mm -hmm. it is really important. Um, yeah. what, what kind of responses have you had through sort of featuring the series on social media and, and in maybe in, even in real life? Has it opened up some interesting conversations? Well, it has. I mean, um, I was I was really quite surprised and actually a little bit overwhelmed by the response on um, social media of people, you know, complete strangers kind of reaching out and saying, oh, thank goodness you've said this because this is how mm, I felt. Or, I feel seen. I feel seen, exactly. And and friends who, you know, we've never spoken about this before and, and they've seen a painting of mine and then suddenly they're telling me 
their story and it might be the first time they've discussed how they're feeling it's it kind of opens a door for a conversation mm. and and it feels like women are desperate to have that conversation you know I, I i belong to as you mentioned my my group and studio fridays a lot of us um who go there are women and and you know you put a few paintings on the wall and and suddenly you've got a crowd around you going oh it's a real God, conversation you know, starter. Time, you know. <laughs> and, but it's uh, so interesting yeah. isn't it the way that it yeah. opens up permission for people yeah. to share something yeah that's been buried quite deep sometimes yeah. for people that they've you know maybe not spoken to it beyond you know their partner at home or even yeah. not maybe not even to them yeah and 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 then it's it becomes you know like their their kind of war story almost well I you know I did this and I did that and sharing things and you think why has this been such a closed conversation for so long I mean my 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 mother never mentioned it to me particularly I, I, mm. and, and it wasn't discussed in schools you're not educated about it um it, it was sort of taboo and kind of a shape like almost like a shameful thing I, I don't know if that's because it's connected to aging I, th- and, I think that's a big part yeah. of it isn't it yeah. we feel like we're losing our kind of youth and vitality and our usefulness and our sort yeah. of sexual nature and, and you know, none of those things are true but it's what yeah. society has beaten into us over yeah. decades so absolutely of we'll internalize all of that yeah, and pretend it isn't happening because it's kind of almost, you know, you don't want to admit you're getting older or something. I don't know, but it's uh, yeah, that was it was very much brushed under the carpet, and and it's um, it's it's amazing now that this is all kind of kind of a snowballed effect. The more people that are talking about it, the more open people are becoming. It's just going to be amazing for the younger generation that they won't grow up in the same way that we've grown up or or certainly I've grown up where it was kind of hidden away and I think almost you know it's it's the the snowball effect has has meant that doctors are now listening more to women they're understanding more because it's been out that you know they they're they're able to talk about their symptoms so much more openly so I think that the snowball effect on the medical side of things is now going to start um, coming through and maybe hopefully in our uh, in our education how we teach our children and at, in schools um, I think the whole thing is is changing which is a wonderful yes. thing are you still working on the series are there more sort of paintings to come or are you only I guess you can only limit it to the things that you personally were experiencing yeah, I mean, um, I am actually doing one um, now. So um, it's about the low mood. It's um, I quite like calling my paintings by a, the sort of the, the symptom or the kind of the, you know, if you have a list of menopause symptoms, the sort of anxiety. Yeah, things, that's things exactly that might... what it says on the tin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's nothing kind of flowery or romantic about it. It's not kind of mystical or whatever. It is just this is what it is um and this one is the sort of the low mood kind of thing which that's quite hard to capture though isn't it it's so ephemeral yeah some of these things have been quite hard to capture I have to say that the um um I mean my thing was um you know just occasionally I'd need to have a little cry and 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 it would come from nowhere and I'd almost have to think why why am I sad I there's I have nothing to be sad about I have a very nice life I you know I have a nice family and and I've got lovely friends why am I suddenly getting this overwhelming sense that I just need a release of emotion and I have a little kind of weep and um, and sometimes that was like in the shower in the morning I just kind of like have a little kind of oh, moment and then I kind of carry on um and I was talking to a friend and she was saying that she had the same thing she had the same kind of it was a moment on your own where it just kind of feels a little mm, overwhelming just and a she wave to, come over you a of- wave <laughs> exactly and hers was in the car she'd be driving on the car and just sort of before she got out the car before she kind of went back in the house a little kind of moment to yourself um and um and so I'm just trying to capture that fleeting moment really where the emotion just comes over boils over kind of Mm. uh, comes out and now I have to decide is that the last one but then I'm thinking, but I haven't done brain fog and brain fog. Is... 
<laughs> brain fog is so horrible. Um, so I, I, at the moment, I don't know. I don't yeah. know whether I mean, that's I'm... another one that would be quite hard to, to paint, yeah. I imagine. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, I did have a little go. Um, but I think because I paint in quite a realistic way, um, I, don't, the, the, I don't have much abstract kind of mm. qualities coming across my, my paintings. If I did, I think I could find a way of showing that that brain fog a little easier they are stunning I think I said on on Instagram they remind me of Lucian Freud paintings in that sort of oh that's the know, highest culture <laughs> realistic yeah Thank you. no that's that's I mean Lucian Freud funnily enough was the artist that got me into self-portraits um I remember seeing an exhibition when I was a child and um just being completely drawn to his faces um and the the atmosphere and mood that he creates in just a look and um just trying to work that story out you know what is going on in this painting what is this person thinking with that kind of tilt of the head um and he was the artist that really made me want to paint and made me want to paint portraits so um, for you saying that, that was that's like the ultimate compliment. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> how how many hours would you do you think go into to each of the portraits? So um, I, it's my starting point is I I first of all have an idea of what I want to try and portray, mm. and quite often that's a feeling, and then I have to think how do I put a feeling into a pose um or a you know a, a, a position of the head uh or a look in the eye and I have to kind of try and act out that mood or emotion um and then I take lots of photographs so the first thing I do is I just take a lot of photographs and it might be just minuscule changes in the, in the photographs that I take mm. um and that might take you know, a day and I might so, take like, so uh, interesting isn't it that uh, I never really thought about that kind of acting yeah. element of it yeah. before but you're right it is a performance art in a way but you've captured it <laughs> in paint yeah because it's like it's almost like that that was just that one image when you see the painting that's just that one image yeah. yeah and you just think well that was it but actually there's there might be a hundred images that are very similar that I'm just trying to get has this one quite captured exactly what I try I'm trying to say so that's that's the first process is really just trying to get that exact photograph that really kind of says what I want it to say and then once I've done that's the hard bit that's harder than the painting bit and once I've got the image then I relax and I think okay now I'm just going to do my thing and then I I um I draw it out and and start adding paint and layers and 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 think about tone and light and everything um and the actual painting probably takes a small painting would take about 20 hours so um and I can I, I kind of have a limit as to how long I can paint for in a day so um I can probably go for about four maximum five hours before I need to, it's too mm. it's too much of a a, a a big concentrated effort really to go any any longer mm. yeah and I guess so I've got no idea of the the scale of the paintings themselves because I've only mm. seen them on on Instagram so how, how big are they in in real life um so they're, they're various they're various sizes um although they're a series I, I, I kind of um didn't want to keep them to a standard size just because I felt that each picture needed something a little bit different mm. um but I have kept the faces about the same size so um um I think a small one is sort of six by nine inches um so if you're thinking of an a4 piece of paper um about that kind of size mm -hmm. and then um and then I kind of go up to say an a3 size piece of paper you know it's kind of you know they're, they're similar but yeah yeah and it's obviously very personal to mm -hmm. you. Would you ever sell them? 
Um, yes, I would sell them. I'm not sure who would buy them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never made them with anything commercial in mm. mind um, because um, it was more, it was less important to me than um, just putting down my feelings. Mm. Um, but um, I think what would I, I would really like to do is to show them as, as a group. Um, um, so I'd love to have an exhibition of my paintings but all mm. together so it's it's it, it can it can kind of show women the kind of stages or the kind of thoughts or feelings that they may encounter if they haven't been through perimenopause yet mm. or relate or people who have been through it can go through it and can relate and kind of get a sense of you know what they've been re recognize what they've been through i think yeah. so to, to show them i think is more important than selling them you need a traveling exhibition i was at <laughs> i was at an event yesterday at the royal college of um obstetrics and gynecology which is they've got a ah. fabulous building in london yeah. so so yeah maybe you should uh to write to them and see if they fancy yeah. having having them all up on display seven or eight depending on yeah well it's a funny thing because it's a kind of crossing between um art and and health and and, mm. art and wellness so it's kind of got that that mix that's the welcome um, collection as well isn't there I yeah if they yeah would do something yeah they've uh, they've just done an amazing exhibition on milk and you know the mm -hmm. kind of connotations that we have with milk through the ages and then breastfeeding and all that kind of thing um so yeah they're they're a very interesting center well, hopefully uh, you will get an, a national touring exhibition and everybody listening will get the chance to come and see them in person because, you know, they're, 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 they're compelling on screen, but I imagine it, it just would be so much nicer to, to see them in real life. But uh... I'd love to. Yes, I would. I would love to show them. And I'm, I'm kind of... Um... I'm sort of entering some competitions and things like that. So I'm sort of hoping that um, they will get out there. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, to see them as a group, I think is is where they're going to be most powerful. Yeah. Well, watch this space, everybody. And remember <laughs> the name, Sarah Gregory. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It's been lovely talking to yeah, you. Thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. You've been listening to the Middling Along podcast. Do remember to subscribe to be notified when our next episode is live. And why not visit the blog at www.middlingalong.com to sign up to my newsletter as well. I do hope you enjoyed listening today. If you did, I'd be really grateful if you would consider leaving a short review as that helps people find the podcast and helps get it noticed. Hope you can join us next time. Goodbye for now.